A lot of people get scared when they see an engine covered in plastic. They don't know how to work on it. Well, it's very simple. This isn't like an old car where you see nothing but plug wires and engine components. They cover it up to make it look pretty. But underneath it all, it's still an engine. So I'll show you real quick where the spark plugs are. All right, first thing we're gonna do is take the plastic cover off, covering the ignition coils. There's two screws hidden under these little caps. The reason they do this is just to make it look pretty. What size was the nut? These nuts are 10 millimeter nuts. Oh. Now on this cover, you do not have to pull them all the way out. You can just kind of leave them in the holes. Just loosen them up. Just loosen them up. There's one 10 millimeter nut here, one 10 millimeter nut here, and the oil filler cap. It's not that hard to take off. Once all, once all those are off, you can remove it and set it off to the side. Yeah, I saw you take it off in a minute there, Wally. These are the ignition coil packs. They sit directly on top of the spark plug. And there are six individual coils. That means there's only one coil per spark plug, which is for very high fuel efficiency. And they're held in by two 10 millimeter nuts on each coil, except on the front and back coils, number one and number six, there are two ground straps which go under the 10 millimeter bolts. Since we're replacing spark plugs on this car, we have to pull the ignition coils off anyway. So I might as well show you how exactly to take it off. There's a metal clip here that holds a connector to the coil. Like I said before, here's the ground strap. You just pry up the little clip, pull up on the coil, and off it comes. All right, now we're just gonna take the rest of the coils out. And with age, the coils will stick onto the plugs. Just give them a little wiggle. They should come right up. Just for me, when I take the coils out, I usually lay them in order, number one, two, three, and so on, just so they'll go back into the same holes. <clears throat> For this job, I usually use a snap-on air ratchet, but you don't need a fancy tool to, to change spark plugs. You can just use regular hand tools. And there's one of them. This BMW uses four ground electrodes to produce a, a longer lasting spark plug. These spark plugs normally get changed between 50 to 60,000 miles. That's a lot longer than an old Chevy. Ah, oh, <laughs> Just because they can go 50 to 60,000 miles, between spark plugs doesn't mean you shouldn't at least take them out once at about 30,000 miles just so they don't get welded into the head. Just take them out, put a little antices here on the threads, and it should, the next time you take them out, they should come out real smooth.
when you take these spark plugs out, make sure you look at them. Make sure that they're not oil fouled, fuel fouled, or coolant fouled. Also inspect for carbon tracks going down the side of the porcelain, as this could cause a misfire or some other engine damage. And because this car takes 60,000 miles between spark plug changes, always put anti-seize on the threads. And just remember, a little dab will do you. When you're putting spark plugs in, thread them in by hand. Don't use a power tool. 90% of the time, you're going to cross-thread it. Screw it down until you feel the until you feel it stop. Then use a torque wrench to torque it to the proper specs, which in this case is 23 foot pounds. When you put these plugs in, because they go 60,000 miles between plugs, I can't emphasize enough putting anti-seize on the threads. That way, when you go to take them out after 60,000 miles, you're not going to lose them in the head. All right, it's time to torque the last one. After this, we get to put the, all the coils back in it, put the cover on, and start it and test it. And on certain BMWs, some of the spark plugs are a little difficult to get to. You just got to be persistent and keep trying. These 10 millimeter bolts holding the coils down, torque them to just about 7 foot pounds. And for this, I don't need a torque wrench, just tight and a little bit more. All right, now it's time to put the coil cover back on it. Install the nuts. Put the little, put the little decorative caps back on it. Make it look good. Torque for these nuts is the same as the coils, seven foot pounds. Now time for the oil cap, time to start. Most shops will charge between a half hour to an hour's worth of labor to replace spark plugs. As you saw, it's not that difficult to do. You can save yourself a little bit of money if you want to do it yourself. At Autobahn Imports, when we do a service, we check all the fluids and all the filters that we can. As you can see, this air filter is nice and clean. It doesn't need any attention right now. But while checking the coolant, we noticed it was low. So we're going to go ahead and top off the coolant. Whenever we can, we use factory approved fluids. If you're unsure about your aim, use a funnel. Don't want to make a mess. You also don't want to overfill the coolant reservoir. Because if you do, when the car gets to operating temperature, it'll puke out the reservoir. Now we're full.
This reservoir right here is the power steering fluid. As you can see, it's up at the line. And the fluid is nice and clean. And always have a shop rag handy when you're checking fluids. This is the brake master, master cylinder fluid reservoir. It also supplies fluid with this hose to the clutch master cylinder. And you'll notice that this hose is higher than the brake side. They want your clutch to go up to lose fluid before your brakes. If your clutch loses fluid, you're just not going. If your brakes lose fluid, you're not stopping. Not good. <laughs> the washer fluid is really easy to check because the bottle is nice and clear. But if it's not clear, just pop the lid open, pull the little filter out, and take a look inside. And if you need washer fluid, you can put washer fluid in it or even add a little bit of water. We're working on a 2001 BMW Z3. We're going to be doing a loop. We're going to be doing an oil and filter change on it. And if you're looking for a screw-on oil filter, you're not going to find it. The oil filter is located under this housing. It is a cartridge-style oil filter. It is located between the power steering reservoir and the cylinder head. The nut on top is a 36 millimeter, but if you do not have a 36 millimeter, a crescent wrench will work and you will be able to get it off. Sometimes they can be kind of tight, especially if they've been installed for a while. Once you can unscrew it by hand, unscrew it slowly so the cartridge can drain. If you unscrew it too fast, you're going to make a really oily mess. And if you're afraid you're going to make a mess, stick a rag here so you can catch whatever oil may come up. Take the rag. Take the rag. Pull the filter out. Flip it upside down real quick. Very little mess. If you did make a little dribble, just wipe it up. And when you're looking under here, this X-shaped cage is to help protect the oil pan from rocks and dings. It also provides a link between the subframe and the body. And if you look right here, you'll notice the drain plug. To remove this, you use a 17 millimeter ratchet. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Make sure to have an oil drain pan ready when you take it loose. You loosen the drain plug, but you need to be careful because the oil will shoot between one to two feet depending on how hot this is. If you're, uh, if you're unsure, do it slowly and when the engine is cold. Pull the hey. drain plug away quickly so you don't make a mess. Okay. Make sure when you drain the oil, let it drain as long as possible. If you think it's taking too long, go get a cup of coffee just so you can get all the crud out of the bottom of the engine. Frontal. One last note, when you're doing the oil change, take the oil filter off first. That'll hold a half a quart of oil. You have to break the seal off so that that oil will drain into the oil pan so you can get all the dirty oil out. As you can see, the oil is still draining just a little bit. It's been about five minutes since we started the drain, so we need to go for a little bit more. Here's the drain plug. When you put the, new, when you put the drain plug back in it, Make sure you put a new seal ring on it. A lot of times the seal ring will get stuck on the oil pan. So use a pick and make sure you get it off. Run the drain plug in with your fingers. Tilt seats. And use your ratchet. Snug it up. It doesn't need to go very tight because it's got that seal ring. When you're taking the filter cartridge out, grab it with the rag so you don't get dirty, give it a twist and a pull, and out it comes. And if you'll notice, there's a black seal and two green seals. The two green seals are permanent, they do not need to be replaced. The black seal needs to be replaced with every filter change. A little bit of 
fresh oil, lube up the seal, and then stick the new cartridge on it. Push it down until you hear it click. The cartridge can go either way. It's non-directional. <clears throat> Installing the oil filter cartridge is fairly easy. Just thread it on. Use your ratchet or crescent wrench to tighten it down. The torque spec on this is 25 newton meters or 18 and a half foot pounds. The M54 engine, which is in this car, takes seven quarts of motor oil, or 6.5 liters if you use liter bottles. We've completed the oil change, start it, and check the oil level. Now that we've started and ran the car, we can check the oil, start it for a minute, shut it off, wait one minute for the oil to drain back down, and the oil level is right between the lines, right where it needs to be. We'll be checking for engine codes on this 2001 BMW Z3 with the iScan 2. We're going to use the factory 20 pin diagnosis port. Make sure all the pins line up and it powers up. When you do this test, make sure the key is in the on position. European BMW GT2. And in this screen, we find out we can do BMW diagnosis, coding. BMW SSS, which is Software Service Station, you can also do Mini. But today, we'll be doing BMW Diagnosis for a check engine light. And since this is a BMW Z3, we have to go into 3 Series. Scroll down until we hit Z3. We can either do a short test or we can look at individual control units. A short test will we'll scan for all the, all the computers. Control unit, you can individually select your computer. So we're going to select the drive system, which includes the DME, transmission control, immobilizer, cruise control, and thermal oil level sensor. We'll be checking the DME, which is the engine computer. Here it, here it brings up the information screen, which gives the part number, hardware number, and associated information. Scroll down to read fault code. Looks like there are two fault codes. First fault code is 039, plausibility brake light switch, brake light test switch. Second fault code, camshaft position sensor, intake cam, malfunction. From here, we could look up to see what these codes mean. And when this car came in, the check engine light was not on. So these cards, these codes might be old. So the first thing we need to do is clear codes and test drive it. After the test drive, we will hook it back up and see if the codes came back. If the codes do not come back, they're usually erroneous. This is Wallace with Autobahn Imports. I hope, I hope you found this video very informative. Until next time, have a great day.